All right, well, thank you guys for being here tonight. Like I said, my name is Samantha. I've been in Tupperware for over 20 years. It's my 20th free car out front. Um, I never in a million years thought that I would sell Tupperware. I started when I was 19. I said, this is stupid. I'm gonna do this for a minute. I'm gonna get some free stuff and then I'm out of here. And that was 20 years ago. <laughs> so um, we've had lots of blessings. I've earned, I was telling the team last night, I've earned appliances and furniture in addition to all the Tupperware and electronics and free trips. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this business that people don't really realize that it's all a part of. Um, and we also have lots of super awesome loyal customers and family members that come along with us too and hang out for the ride, whether they like it or not sometimes. <laughs> um, but we have customers who like to just come down here and hang out with us as well and learn how to use their product because you might pick up this stack cooker. Some of you guys might even have your mom's and it's like a cream colored and you're like, oh, that's what that's for. <laughs> or we've all grown up with Tupperware and remembered the big bowls, right? But you're like, I don't know what to use that for other than a Tupperware bowl. So um, a lot of people don't realize how much Tupperware has come along over the years that we have cookware um, and we have microwave cookers. A lot of people fear cooking in the microwave. And I'll tell you without the whole backstory, it's a story for another day at your party. Um, I've done the research outside of Tupperware that tells us that our Tupperware is good stuff and you don't have to worry. There's no bad chemicals and all that in our plastic that a lot of people fear. And whether you microwave something that is microwavable or not, you might stain it and make it look ugly, like it has a little ring around the rosy on the inside, looks like the dogs chewed it. It might look ugly, but it's not gonna hurt you. And Tupperware is the only product in the entire world that's 100% guaranteed with all of their products like that. So feel at ease about that. You guys have your catalogs and brochures in front of you. So anything that I'm talking about, feel free to um, look through that. We'll show you some of the sales specials tonight as well. And then if you have questions, Louise will give you guys tickets and we'll do some drawings at the end of the night as well. Um, and if it's, uh, like I said, anything like, you know, is this really my hair and how old am I? We take your tickets away, so <laughs> just kidding. Um, but I'm going to tell you about quite a bit of the product tonight. It, we call this my fajita margarita party, but for the sake of the studio, it's our margarita. <laughs> so have what you like. Or you have the cold brew, which I'll also show you how that works, that you can use it for coffee or tea. So if you're not a coffee person, you can use it for loose leaf tea. Um, and have like nice really herbal if you just want a green tea a black tea or fruit tea you can use it for those things as well which is really nice and the cold brew in there lasts up to two weeks so if you forget about it it's not like the coffee pot that you brew that day you gotta dump it because it's bad now and all bitter this will last for a couple weeks I think this one we made last week so those of you that are trying it tonight it's good you'll be up till one in the morning but whatever <laughs> Right? So um, I'm going to start with a couple different things here and just go through the process and the girls will run up if we need to do a couple other things. If you can't see, feel free to just jump right in here with us. Um, but the fajitas, we have chicken somewhere. I'll grab that. Oh, and the honey. Um, the, I found this recipe. My kitchen is all chili peppers, or it used to be until my husband started painting my red walls white again and um, I had a calendar that had like 16 ingredients for fajitas and I'm not a big cook no matter how many years I've been in Tupperware I'm just not a big cook I like anything that's easy I have three kids in three different schools and a husband who works in the prison system so I don't have time for things to take a lot of time I make Thanksgiving I think twice ever in my whole life because it's it's a lot of work to make all that food. Dishes go in the sink and now I gotta wash them too and they wolf it down because they're boys, right? So quickly. So thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Louise. I'm gonna for take you with me. Home. I know, right? Yeah. Um so she makes her Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. So I took the oh ingredients, if you will, for the marinade and I made it into like four, four or six different ingredients. Like it's super simple. And I am a Weight Watcher person, so um, I'm gonna just take the whole top off of this. Take your top off. Um, I 
like again like to do everything simple but because i try to be good how many of you guys made new year's resolutions and you're still trying to follow them okay good for you i think it, it they say it takes 21 days to make a habit and 90 to make it a lifestyle but only seven to ruin the habit <laughs> so when i make this it calls for honey first a cup of honey and I, a lot of times, will do sugar-free honey. Now, people tell me all the time, honey's naturally sugar-free. If you go to the grocery store, you can actually find on the shelf sugar-free honey. I didn't even know that I know. existed. Go figure. Whatever. Gosh. So, um, I, a lot of times, will grab the sugar-free honey just because it makes me feel better. I need more counters up here. <laughs> Our counters are really cool. But, uh, and they move around, but I need more of them, I think. So we have our lemon lime squeezer, and I'm just using some of the colors that we already have up here. Our lemon lime squeezer comes in black now, so it makes you look thinner when you use it. <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> but how many of you guys will go to make something and you're like, my limes are too hard and I can't do anything with them, right? Or you have lime juice in the little squeezy. Yeah, anybody? Mm -hmm. I use the lime juice and the squeezy because yeah. it's just easier sometimes. <laughs> um, or if you have a cut on your hand and you're like, yeah, I'm not squeezing that because I'm going to feel it in about five seconds. What's cool about this is that you can squeeze right in here and you don't have to feel anything. It has a zester. How many of you guys make key lime pie? Nobody. <laughs> that was last night. Um, so you can zest right on here. You could do like chocolate shavings if you want to. Put it over a banana cream pie. Maybe I need a pie. Um, so that's your little zester. It falls into the cavity. You can shake it off, put it right in top of your whatever you're using. For tonight, we're using as a lemon lime squeezer. You're going to put it in here where the juice um, and the fruit goes down, where it looks like it's upside down, and you just squeeze that baby. And it almost completely inverts it to where there is like nothing left, which is really neat. Every once in a while, our juicer comes out for our um, Great Master system. Hi. Um, it comes out, and it, that one's really, it's a bigger system, so it's really good for oranges or grapefruit or anything like that. If you want to make fresh squeezed juice during the summer, if you're being all fancy, I'm not that fancy. Actually, I am the sound food when I'm with her. <laughs> She's all your fancy. Well, you know, when you have all boys in your house, somebody has to be fancy. So I'm going to just squeeze a couple limes. It calls for, I think, like three um, quarters of a cup of lime juice. So I just do about three or four limes, depending on how much juice I can get out of there. Now, if you're really struggling with them, you can always zap it in the microwave for about 30 seconds, and that helps to release the juice, too, if you didn't know that. And um, that will help make your life a little bit easier. And you can also roll them and use them as a stress ball if you've had a hard day at work. Any of you guys work full time? We call those J-O-Bs, just over broke. Tupper is a Y-O-B, your own business. But I'm <laughs> oh, that one has... A lot in there and then we call for um, garlic does anybody want to come up here and try any of these gadgets right um, so I'm gonna do the garlic in here how many of you guys use fresh garlic how many of you just go and grab the jar stuff because it's easier? I do both. I do both. Right. <laughs> it depends on the day of the week, right? If you're feeling like I can do this, and then other days you're like, I don't want to do this. There's also frozen. And fro there's frozen. frozen. That's new to me. That I did not know. So you can go to Costco. We have Winco here that you can buy them in bulk. So I just buy a lot. And garlic needs to be in a dark, um, not cold place, but more of a room temperature to last longer. So I'm just gonna squeeze a bunch of garlic out of here. And we have our garlic press. Sometimes it's around, sometimes it's not. So always grab it up when you can. You're gonna put it in there. You see, I did not peel it at all. You're gonna put it right into your garlic press and it just shoots right out of there. Fresh, fresh squeezed garlic. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, but what's cool about this is that it takes the peel right off of it. So I can 
take that right off of there and throw it away. So I don't have to peel anything. How many of you ever sat there with onions, garlic, and now your hands smell like onions and garlic? We had um, a class here one time and one of our gals, she must have squeezed, I don't know how much garlic. And at the time we didn't have the garlic presses down here. She's like, I seriously hate you guys. <laughs> My hands are gonna smell like garlic until Christmas. It's like 40 cloves. Yeah, like, it was so much garlic. Wow. So that's just really nice when you don't have the mint stuff and you just need to make it easier, right? Now, how many of you guys know about Tupperware seasonings? Not very many, okay. So Tupperware has a seasoning called chipotle. I love Mexican food. I actually cook Mexican food very good. I don't do a lot of other stuff very good, but that one I am. And um, we have this chipotle seasoning and it went away. We couldn't buy it anymore. I almost knocked that over. And I was super bummed. Well, Tupperware came out with the recipe for us to make it. It is the best seasoning you will ever have. Have you ever done a recipe that calls for a packet of taco seasoning? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff in those things if you read them. What's really nice about making your own seasonings, it calls for about a tablespoon and a half or a little more. Um, <laughs> I always put a little bit more. We use Chipotle all the time, so we actually had to make one for down here at the studio because we use it for everything. And these ingredients here, we're gonna give you guys the recipes before you leave tonight. Nice. This, every one of these calls for Chipotle seasoning, so we use it for everything. Um, but we can give you the recipe to make this, and we also do spice classes here. So if you ever wanna just come down and make it, because to buy all the ingredients to make for one batch can get expensive. But if you wanna participate in a class, then it's a little less expensive, plus you get the shakers with it. So this one's nice, and these ones a lot of times are on sale, and even when they're not, they are plastic, they are an acrylic plastic, so it looks like glass, so you can still feel fancy. But on the inside here, you saw it comes with the spoon. So if you're, how many of you guys are kind of measurers, a little this, a little that, right? Mm -hmm. And others of you, you're like, it says one tablespoon, I'm measuring it and like slicing it off the top, no? <laughs> so with seasonings, if you're, Cooking, you don't often have to go by exact when you're baking, you need to. Mm -hmm. With these ones, it's nice because you can kind of scoop out of this. Now, how many of you guys like to do crafting? Good yeah. for you. <laughs> I just say that from time. <laughs> I'm not a crafter. I didn't get that gene. What's cool with these ones is you can use them for anything that you want to. My mom uses them for googly eyes or if you sort um, <laughs> buttons or you do, um, I don't know, what crap Little pom-poms. Little pom-poms, yeah. right? Oh, you're so good. Yeah. So you can do all kinds of things in those, and they stack. They have a little bit of a lip on the cover there, so they sit together so it doesn't slide off the top. It just kind of sits together. I always have to make sure I do this right or I'm going to get a nice little bath. So these are our new shakers. Everything here comes in the new chili color. Sometimes we have the exclusive blue, so check with your consultant. It measures here up the side, metric and American. Um, and it's a twist cap. Now, what's nice about our newer shakers, if you're familiar with the old Hidden Valley version, that was copyright, um, they changed it where it was a snap-on seal to now a twist seal, and it still has the insert on there so that you can shake it up and it mixes everything up. So if you use cheater packs of gravy or anything like that, it breaks up the powder that <laughs> those packets we're not supposed to use, right? But even when you're doing this or your maybe a slim fast shake, a lot of us use them for that, or just your water bottle. It has a nice little spout on here, and you'll hear it snap. You know it's sealed. So it can actually go inside of your purse, and it's not going to drip all down inside of there. So I just give it a good shake. I always say anytime that you're doing things like this or using our chopper, make sure your Fitbit is on the right hand. <laughs> Get your steps in, right? So, just kidding. That's pretty red tinted. Maybe I put too much Chipotle in there. <laughs> so that's our marinade for our chicken. And now, how many of you guys microwave cook at home? Not too many people, because it kind of like, oh, I don't know about that, right? So years ago, <laughs> Years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer and had to do some research on my own to make sure I was safe to use it. And without the whole story, like I said, Tupperware is the only one that's safe to use that. So we have our stack cooker here that you can do so many things. Now this whole recipe, you can use on our cookware. It's absolutely amazing. You will love our cookware. If you don't have it, I promise you're gonna want it, right Gwen? 
So yeah. this one here, she has all of it. Um, this one here is our step cooker. I have four of these at home. Remember I told you I have a big family. So when I do enchilada casserole at home, I make like four when they all come over. We had 58 people once at Thanksgiving, the first Thanksgiving I ever did and decided I'd never do again till last year. And only. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this has your cone in the center. I'll tell you what that's for. This is an exclusive three fourth quarter insert that comes out once in a while. Anytime you can get your hands on this, grab it. Even if you don't have the rest, still get this piece because it doesn't come out very often. And then when it does and you get this later, you're gonna wish you had it, I promise you. So we're not gonna use this one just yet. It also comes with a one and three fourths quart colander. This one's great for steaming your vegetables, draining off grapes, cooking your ground beef or ground turkey in the microwave, all the fat drains to the bottom versus on the back of my bottom instead of it doesn't you know, go where it's not supposed to. Like when you cook ground beef on the stove top, all that grease separates and then it goes back together and you're like, where'd it go? It's like magical, right? Yeah, no, it's still in the meat <laughs> and now we've eaten it. So that actually helps to decrease a significant amount of the fat to help save if you're doing Weight Watchers and anything like that. So I don't use the colander as often, but if I'm doing even a bag of broccoli that I got at Costco, cause they're a good size broccoli, I rinse it off in here, I put it right in the base of this, I put the cover on, pop it in the microwave three, four minutes, and it is the greenest broccoli you will ever see in your life. And you've just um, saved all the nutrients right in there. If you boil your vegetables on the stove top, you've actually taken all the nutrients, boiled it right into the water. You can toss the broccoli and drink the water because the nutrients is now in the water. How much water do you put? Do you have to put water I don't in the put bottom? any water. No, That's a really good question. Enough? I just rinse it because produce is made water. of 80 to 100 percent water anyways about 97 percent hence watermelon right she's all give me my ticket um, so, you just rinse it off in there and then you're going to put it in the base if i'm doing vegetables i use the one and three fourths quart base and then i use the cover here and just pop that on because all the water that's already on it is steaming it if i'm going to do something um I'm trying to think what I might need water in the base of. What about I don't know like, let's say frozen water. corn? Not, definitely it, not frozen because crystals. the water crystallized already on there <laughs> is the water that's saved yep, on there. Good. She's all, stay here for my tickets, please. <laughs> just <laughs> She gets a little bit Yeah, just kidding. why not? Um, <laughs> if I'm doing any kind of meat, like any of my water. proteins, yeah. ground beef, anything like that, I'm gonna use the colander over the bigger portion because then the meat that I'm cooking isn't sitting in its own bucket of grease, right? So this here for this whole contraption minus the extra piece is $114, it changes here and there. You can get it as a host for half price. You can buy it out right if you want. I promise you three uses of it and it will have paid for itself in my house too because it's expensive for us to go eat anywhere. Um, and or you can be a consultant and get it for three dollars. We can tell you more about that later if you're interested So it this thing is worth every single penny. It is the most used microwave container in my house um, We absolutely love it and my husband came from a family of people that they do not cook in the microwave They don't believe in cooking in the microwave now. They all use it the cone is for the insert here if you wanted to do a meatloaf or a cake you can take a cake, a cake mix from a box style if you want to, or if you're Betty Croft and you want to make your own homemade, have at it. I don't do that either. I have a stand up expensive mixer that gets used once a year. Um, so I take the box mix, three eggs, and a pie filling of any kind, any flavor mixture that you want to add together, mix it up in our mix and store pitcher, and pop this baby uncovered into the microwave nine to 12 minutes, depending on the cake that you're doing, and it will be the best cake, I promise you. It's awesome cake that pops out of there. If you don't believe me, buy it and try it and tell me otherwise. <laughs> um, but it works really well. So tonight, we're not gonna use the cone either because I didn't make you a cake, sorry. Um, we're gonna throw our chicken pieces in here. Weezy, can I ask you to do me a big fat favor? Or Katrina, one of you guys. Will you slice this a little thinner than I should have done? So I, most of the time when I cook this, I do um, boneless, skinless chicken breasts. There's a knife and a cutting board already there. Just a little bit more thinner slices. I do boneless, skinless chicken breasts almost always in my house. How many of you guys should own chickens in your house because you eat so much chicken, right? Like we could use some chickens in our backyard. 
It's not legal, but um, I use, I do boneless skinless because when you're doing boneless skinless, it cooks a little bit faster and more evenly as well. Um, and you don't have to worry about picking things off the bone and everything. And being that I've been in Weight Watchers so long, it's actually a healthier version versus the thighs and things like that. Um, so I'm going to throw the chicken right in here sliced up. I'm going to throw the marinade over there. We're going to add some onions to it and I pop it in the microwave. For about seven to nine minutes, your um, microwaving depends on how big is your microwave because if you have a larger container on a small, let's say, um, trailer microwave, like a motorhome microwave, this is too big to often go in those or it won't cook as evenly, so you need to watch it a little more. If it doesn't spin, you need to be able to turn it, so take it out halfway, turn it, and so forth. Um, and also the wattage. So the newer the microwave, the less time you need to cook for usually because newer microwaves have higher wattage. Um, and a lot of them will tell you to cook at a lesser power for less time so that you guys know that. So then when that pops out, we'll throw in some bell peppers and it's literally done, all of it complete. If you want to take and use your extra pieces, you can take your tortillas and you can really use for fajitas for this particular recipe or my enchilada casserole. Um, you can use corn or flour, it doesn't really matter. When I go to Texas, I get homemade tortillas and it's wonderful. Um, but how many of you guys have that glass in your microwave, the little spinner, and the glass says tortilla? Anybody? <laughs> it happens, right? Because you put them in there, or it says mission, or whatever the brand is. You put it in there, and you think I'll just heat them up. If you reheat any breaded items in the microwave for more than 10 or 15 seconds, they're hard as a rock after too long, right? So you'll steam them. You'll find some people will take tortillas and wrap them in a paper towel, and that will make, make them last a little bit longer, right? We actually have a steamer. If you want a separate steamer, you could do that. I usually just, it's another piece of my stack cooker. It's like Thanksgiving. You don't want to use all these dishes and have all this stuff to wash when I can do it all in just a couple. So I, a lot of times, will use these extra pieces. I reheat them in here, keep it covered, and they stay warm for a good long time, which is really nice as well. Um, so I just heat them in there and throw that together. And then my microwave glass plate doesn't say tortillas. <laughs> How long do you have to do that? Um, I do about 30 seconds. Thanks, 30 dear. Seconds. So we have boneless, skinless chicken breasts. We're going to give you guys all a taste of those tonight. <laughs> and that just goes right into our stack cooker. And I'm going to give that another shake there. And you want it to be nice and coated. You'll notice when it comes out of the microwave that it's a little bit watery. That's okay. And I just use one of our strainer spoons to scoop it out or our tongs, which are perfect as well. And then I'll pop that right in there. But before I do that, have you guys ever used a mandolin? Yes. Not a mandolin. Which one? The big one or the little one? <laughs> Any of them. Oh, yes. Those, right? So we have our big old mandolin here, and a lot of people don't use them because they're fearful it's going to cut your hands off or something. If you don't use the guard on the Tupperware one, you will have issues, I promise you, right? So always, always, always use the guard. It comes with a little diagram, so if you're like, what did she say? It tells you exactly how to do all the things I'll tell you or don't tell you right here. It also has a little QR reader code that you can zap with your smartphone, and this cute little girl will pop up and tell you how to use it if you forget and you want to see the video. <laughs> On the bottom of it, you can store the rest of your blades. I have a bonus blade in mine, and right now I have the one we're going to use on top. But there is um, what I like to call my ridge blader. Um, what potato chips do we call those? Ruffles. Ruffles, thanks. My ruffles blade. <laughs> I try not to eat chips that often, at least in the first part of January. Um, and then it also has the QR reader code here for you as well if you happen to lose that one. That little guide is um, coded, so if it gets gross, you can still just wipe it off and keep using it, and it's not going to be yucky. These pop out of here, so when you go to clean it, this pops right out of here. This blade is extremely sharp. So always, of course, set it aside like you would with any other blade, and then it's all separated. Underneath here, you also have this opening where these blades are at, so you want to make sure you always have the protector on there as well to keep that nice and safe. When you're storing it, you always make sure your dials are in the locked position so that you never take a chance of slicing your fingers or hands or small people's hands, unless you're mad at somebody, I suppose. And then you lock that right in there. 
make sure that the holes match up and snap it back in. So you can kind of see, maybe at a distance there, that I can slide my hand all I want on there and it's not gonna hurt me because it's raised up and protected. So also here, you have little rubber feet on the bottom so it doesn't dance all over your countertop when you go to use it. And you can raise these up. I'm gonna put this in the lowest position. So last night we made homemade potato, not potato chips too, yeah. but we made homemade fries and chipotle mayo that you can sample over there if you want. Um, and you can just crank them up here if you wanted to make cubed vegetables for a chili or a soup or anything like that. You can do that all right here as well. It looks all professional. Make yourself look fancy like when the in-laws come over, right? Um, and then when you lift this one, you can see the teeth come out. Did you kind of see how that pops out of there? And there's a thicker and a thinner version, depending on if you like thick cut potatoes or thin cut potatoes or whatever you're making. So for today, we're gonna just leave it in the locked position because we're just using the slices. And I'm gonna make thin slices of onions. How many people don't like onion? Oh, that's if perfect. It's thin. <laughs> oh, yes. it's thin. The only two the in the room. Yes, it was <laughs> <laughs> I'll pick them out, they're big. Right? She's yeah, I do the slice these ones pretty big. So you have to dig, right? <laughs> Yeah, a little more of a visual here. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys. You always use the guard on this like I was sharing with you so that you don't slice your fingers. Let me just take the skins off of this. And you're going to take the guard. It has teeth on it as well, so it'll sit right on top of there. And then because this can wipe off, I'll just show you guys here. And you can kind of see the slices as they come off of here. Look how super paper thin that can be, right? How many of you like onion rings? Perfect for onion rings to make your own. So I'm just gonna throw those in there. And I do make them bigger because then you can pick them out, but it's onions help create all that flavor in there, right? So we're just gonna, some of you are like, yeah, no, leave them out still. <laughs> Smells very good. Smells good. Mm -hmm. The rest of them are like, I can't smell that here. Yeah, All right, so I'm going to pop in. that into the microwave. I can sell Tupperware, but I can't use the microwave. <laughs> All right, so we do the same thing in essence with your bell peppers. I'll just show you quickly how I would use these ones and do the same kind of thing so that when that pops out, you have bell peppers to throw back in there and you can either microwave it a little bit more or you can just um, throw them in there and let it sit and it steams it. But it happens so fast that you're like, it's already done. Like there's not much of it left and still super paper thin, right? Yeah. So we have those. I'm gonna set that aside for a moment and I'll finish those up in a sec. Katrina, can I give you some stuff? Okay. All right, so how many of you guys have ever had artichoke dip? Do you love artichoke dip? Yes. Some of you are like, no. I know there's a couple of you in here that don't like artichoke dip. Well, we you, we call this one a spicy Mexicali dip, and it is artichoke, um, I guess Mexican way, right? <laughs> Would we say that? So you're doing the same thing. I'm gonna use our Power Chef. How many of you guys have our Power Chef? This thing is the bomb.com. How many of you guys will sit and chop onions and tomatoes and everything for your salsa? and you're sitting there forever crying over onions. You don't have to worry about that with this. Thank you, dear. So this is uh, also on sale right now in the chili. This has a motor on top that just goes right here on your cover that will go into the middle. We'll show you here in a second. You have your drip spout, so if you're making that homemade mayonnaise, it will slow drip the oil into it. You have a whipper blade for that mayonnaise or whipping cream or anything like that. And then you have a blade and it has a blade protector because it is very sharp. 
you'll notice on here that it has the blades in a few different spots and that's so that it's actually whipping it up and chopping it evenly so you don't have semi chunky salsa and semi drippy salsa right so we're going to throw all of our different things in here how many of you guys buy cans with the pop top already because it's just easier yeah not anymore if you've ever been a part of a grocery family you don't buy them that way <laughs> because we teach otherwise so all food comes from a warehouse or something at some point and there's critters running across <coughs> so if the critters have landed and stayed a minute whatever they left behind is sitting here right on top so if you don't take and clean them off and you pop that right open and sometimes it slips now it's down inside of your food yay so instead of popping that off we still recommend that you use our can opener here our can opener has um, two legs here and a beak at the top. You take this on the top here and it will go right over the top of that pop top there. And you're gonna go around, we always say go around twice for good measure. And you'll kind of either feel it or hear it pop and you'll know that it's released. It's not actually cutting the can, it's releasing and separating the glue that keeps the can together. And then you're gonna take the beak of that can opener and you're gonna pop that right open opens the whole thing and there's no sharp edges so don't even try it <laughs> i need to drain that off i'm gonna put some of you guys to work sorry come here my little friend <laughs> uh, you're, i'm gonna give you my fitbit while you're at it <laughs> sorry will you drain that one off and i'm gonna give you this one don't go too far <laughs> same thing pop the beak off of there and then once we come back with that we drain those and we're gonna pop them right inside of here now this one I haven't made in a minute most of this I can do without even looking at it it's a uh, the artichoke hearts fat-free sour cream shredded Mexican style cheese 10 ounce can of diced tomatoes with chilies drained and our Southwest Chipotle because you got to have Southwest Chipotle on everything like it's kind of an essential how many of you guys use salt for a lot of things nope. my house doesn't either my husband won't let me anymore so we do um, a lot of other seasonings and mrs. dash I'll wait to put you always want to put your seasoning on the top so that it blends throughout the whole thing so we'll let that come over we're gonna add the cheese and again it gives you the exact measurements I do a little this a little that when it comes to cheese, a little more of that, <laughs> right, anybody? Thank you so much. And what's nice about your cans this way, how many of you guys have cups at home that like to get into the trash, right? Or you have boys that don't know how to take out the trash properly, they lift it up, it slices down the side, and now you have trash all over your kitchen floor. So that won't happen when you do this because there's no sharp edges to do that or cut the snout of the pets, right? So you make sure that that's locked into position. It has a little rubber gripper so it doesn't dance all over your countertop. And then you just pull the motor. Okay, I'm gonna pull it a couple times. Now, if you get going and I'll muscle it up, you can break the motor right on the top. <laughs> so we're not all as strong as we think we are, right? So I'm gonna put that chipotle in there and some of the cheese. I hear the fajitas going off. This is why the air has to be on because I get going and you don't want your food all sweaty, right? That looks about a cup. <laughs> and then we're gonna seal that back up. And so what's nice about the blade on this also is it's also mixing it. So you don't have to switch out the two different blades that does it all together. And then we're gonna throw this in a microwave safe container, which I like to use the other piece of the stuff cooker. I don't know what I did with it. Oh. You too can be a Tupperware lady. <laughs> So we're gonna throw that right on top of there. Now, how many of you guys make artichoke dip at home? It takes about an hour to bake in a glass container. You have to grab the pot holders when you pull it out of the oven. No pot holders, no oven with this, especially in the summer. Or how about how many of you guys are having football parties coming up, right? And artichoke dip is kind of a staple at those football parties. 
from what I understand. I don't do football either. Um, so, we need more cheese on top, yes? Yes. Always more cheese. Always more cheese. All right. Now it's a cup. Yeah, now it's like a cup and a half, whatever. Um, and then we're going to take the cover. So let me show you first before I do that. That whole batter filled this, right? So it's a good size amount. The other option that you can use is the um, vet and serve containers, which I'll show you. But I want to point out to you guys how to use a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> this is just getting started and warming up here, but I'm not having to grab pot holders. I do put, um, because of our countertops here, I put a little safety guy on there. The handles are Staco handles. So even if this was complete, I would still uh, be able to grab the handles without any pot holders. These are Staco handles on all of our microwave safe products. So you don't have to worry about burning yourself or small children burning themselves. And then I just throw in my bell peppers and then when that comes out, I'll pop this back in a couple more minutes. And I'll show you when that comes out as well, that you want to um, release the cover away from your face or you're going to get a steam bath also. <clears throat> so we'll throw a couple different colors in here. The red, don't ever do this at home. <laughs> the red one's always a little too tall for me to get all the way up in there, right? So we're just gonna put that in there. This is why you need multiple spatulas. <laughs> I use a lot of spatulas all the time. And our, what's really cool about these is they're heat resistant up to 400 degrees and they come apart for easy cleaning. If you've ever been a participant at our candy making classes, we make peanut brittle that gets really, really hot. And so you need to be able to use a spatula that can get in there and not melt inside of it. These fully come apart for easy cleaning. Sometimes you have to use your muscles. <laughs> they come apart for easy cleaning so you can put them in the dishwasher and it gets all the gunk out of it. You don't have to worry about bacteria building up inside of your spatulas. And they're nice heat resistant and they make for great spankers. <laughs> Just saying. So we'll cover that, that'll switch out and then you have your first dip ready to go. I'm gonna make you guys mango salsa and then we also have sour cream that we add chipotle to because it's awesome. <laughs> you gotta have chipotle with everything, right? And actually the, the chipotle and all of our seasonings, most of them are good on any protein. Most of them are good with any um, cream cheese for a bagel spread and with sour cream for chip dip or veggies or anything like that for the majority. Um, we have a couple sweet ones that I would say cinnamon vanilla, maybe not with sour cream, but you could add it to Greek yogurt with fruit and stuff like that if you wanted to as well. All right, so last thing I'm gonna share, can I pass off some dishes for a couple of you? Just throw them in the sink for me. I'm running out of space. Totally not. I know, right? <laughs> That's it? Okay. Well, I thought there was more, but there Are you doing mandolin? No, I want to finish this. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you know. Now, um, with mango salsa, how many of you guys have ever had mango salsa before? Mm -hmm. How many have ever had my mango salsa before? Mm -hmm. It's the best you'll ever have. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> I promise you. Okay, so stack cooker first, and you can rest them on top of each other. I won't, so this one doesn't get gunky, but they do stack up. So that when you go to open it, you want to make sure that you open it, like I said, away from your face so you don't get a little bath. And you see all the steam that comes off of there? It's pretty impressive, right? And that is all complete. Your artichoke dip is done, but it's our spicy Mexicali, so it's a little bit different. Okay, now I'm gonna give you this one. So you guys can try that. And that one's good with chips, crackers, bread, whatever you wanna put it with. I'm gonna pop this one back in here for a couple more minutes. All right, and so last thing that we're gonna do here is mango salsa. So again, I'm using our chopper. 
The nice thing with this one also, it comes with a little baby chopper. So if you're just doing baby food or onions for a chili or something like that, you can use the little chopper and you can get it separate, combined in a whole set, whatever you wanna do. But I highly recommend both pieces because we use them all the time at home. It's just so much easier. I love our knives. But if I don't have to sit and chop onions and I can pull right here and chop them up just the same, why not, right? And I'm not crying over it. So again, take off your blade here. We're gonna use, I call it a purple onion. The store calls it a red onion. You pick. <laughs> I have a purple onion. Oh, there it is. That I'm gonna use here. And we're just gonna use a portion of it because I do like onion, but not a lot of onion. And it says to quarter it up. A lot of people feel like they have to slice it up a lot. Your chopper will do that for you, so you don't have to. So we're gonna throw that in there. And then it calls for a jalapeno. And you're gonna cut that in half. I did not de-seed this one, Shutsky. I don't wanna hurt anybody today, so we'll take the seeds out of this. So you always wanna take the seeds out, usually over cold water, remind me not to touch my face. And then I do cilantro. When I do my salsas, I do everything that I call that has a big bite first. If you don't like any of those three things, they've been chopped up nice and fine down in the bottom first, right? Get a few good steps in on your Fitbit. Look how fine that just chopped that up. So I'm not sitting there chopping over onions and I'm breaking a sweat. It just looks like I'm so Martha Stewart up here. <laughs> and then um, we're gonna add part of our, it's a green bell pepper, half of a green bell pepper and half of a red. Oh, we'll use the other part of this red guy. If you don't want to do bell peppers or you have allergies to them, you don't have to but that's one of the things that I like about it. Then it calls for um, pineapple tidbits, or um, we have crushed here today, and you can use the rings and just chop it up if you want to. And then a mango. How many of you guys have ever picked up a mango before and bought those? Some people are like, I don't know how to buy them, so I'm not gonna buy it, right? No, no. It's like an avocado, you've bought an avocado before. If it's too firm, it's not even good to eat at the time and it makes even cutting and using it really hard. If it's too mushy, it's not even fun to use. You're like, I'm done with this mango. I love mangoes so much that I could eat them whole and I wish the skin just came off of it automatically. <laughs> like, I love mangoes. So when they had this salsa come out, I was like, this is the bomb. We have a lot of really cool peelers and different ones right now. I like a simple vertical peeler. We have different ones if you're a horizontal vertical peeler. If you like this one, Stay tuned. So our peelers peel really nicely, so there's not a lot of effort into it, whether you're peeling over your sink or your trash can. And then there is one seed down inside of your um, mango here, and it's a pretty large seed. So you can tell when you cut it off of here, I suppose I could have done that ahead of time. When you cut it off, uh, the mango itself off of the seed, you wanna cut a long, the seed itself. So I'll just peel this off of here. But a lot of people will peel with a knife because it's quicker, or that's just what they're in the habit of doing. The nice thing with our peelers is it just literally takes off a little piece of that skin, so you're saving all of your mango. You're not losing a ton of the mango, and it calls for a whole mango. Well, by the time you've peeled it with a knife, you need two mangoes. <laughs> There's like nothing left of it. Um, you can use frozen mango with the salsa, but with my salsas, I do everything fresh. My, um, we have the, our other salsa over there for you guys too that we just made, so it's always fresh. So you're gonna take it, I like to take where the end of the mango is that you can kind of see where it lines up and just cut down the side. And you'll see, I haven't hit, I don't wanna put that in there yet. I haven't hit the seed in the center. You'll see how close you get to your center. If it's easier, just kind of cut off the end of it so that it sits still on your countertop and then you can get the majority off of there. So we'll finish up with this. Any questions so far? Mm -hmm.
you have tickets. <laughs> You're totally enthralled. How many of you guys make fajitas at home? Pretty regularly? Every once in a while? It's actually a pretty fairly healthy meal. Um, but a lot of people feel like it's just so much work. And cooking in general seems like a lot of work, right? So they've come up with DoorDash now. My son's very good at DoorDash. <laughs> he had to show me how to use the app. He's 18, you know. When they're 18 and they know everything. All right, so I got the majority off. I always save a little bit for me to chew on later, but I don't do that in front of you guys. <laughs> I seriously love mangoes. My seven-year-old can eat this mango salsa with a spoon. And it gets pretty zippy, too. All right, so we're going to put so the seeds, top back the on. It's pretty small in there, huh? Yeah, it depends. Um, my, so when I go to Texas, the mangoes there, this is a small mango in Texas. Then they have a regular size, and then they have a very large size. If you ever see my Facebook, you'll see pictures wow. of it. So that is your seed in the center of it, and you want to get all of that off of there. Okay. Um, and probably not good to slice down it. Our knives are good enough that it will slice down it as well. And then anytime I do my salsa, I do it in three rounds because otherwise you'll get pieces like this that don't chop and then you'll get to the top and some of it's too small and some of it's too chunky. So I just like to add little pieces at a time so that I don't, it's cut more evenly um, when our husbands get involved, remind them that they don't need to muscle it up because you'll hear that gear crank inside of it. You kind of heard that happening there. So you want to be careful with that. And the other thing you can do too is give it a little bit of a shake and it shakes it up for it. And then we're going to add our pineapple. So I will open this one. Where'd I put the computer? All of these countertops look exactly the same, so I don't know what counter everything is in. We're like, where did we put that bowl? And then I have the cheese grater out here for you guys, but we have our shredded cheese already. Um, how many of you guys buy bag cheese? It's easier. Bag cheese often comes with um, potato starch, is that what it is, on the inside? And a lot of people are actually allergic to potato starch, and they learn the hard way. So you want to be careful with that as well. I might not have gone all the way around this one. Um, and this salsa, we don't have to drain the pineapple off of crushed pineapple. If you had pineapple tidbits, you would need to drain it because it's just too much juice in there. And you can add the lime to it or not add the lime. It's totally up to you. So we're just going to scoop here and I'm a messy chef as well <laughs> I can be so I've been in Tupperware all these years I've learned a ton of different recipes when I actually started Tupperware I was not a big cook at all I didn't do much of any cooking my dad is anybody seen Full House yep. my dad's Danny Tanner <laughs> not in real life but he might as well be and so we didn't do a lot in the kitchen because it would require making a mess and my dad was not about messes in the house he still isn't and so um, I just didn't do a lot of cooking when I first moved out on my own so when I started Tupperware I was like I can't even do this because I don't cook how many would say that right mm -hmm. I don't cook I couldn't do Tupperware it's not for me and I shortly um, within, I don't even know how long, learned a lot of really quick, easy recipes and how Tupperware made it so much easier because you have all these cool tools. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to start to experiment with things and try it out and come up with my own menu. So this is one that I do in my house all the time because my family loves it. I feel good about giving them something healthy and I'm not spending for us to go out. We went to BJ's recently. It was the five of us. Actually, the oldest one didn't even go. It was the four of us and it was like $80 for four people. That's crazy. I can do two whole meals at home or less for $40 or do meal prepping for the whole week for all my lunches, right? So just like that. 
you can take that blade right out of there and you have mango salsa. And I promise you it's the best mango salsa you're ever gonna try. If it's not, I'll pay you. <laughs> so let me get this out for you guys. And I'll show you how this just turns out so wonderfully all together. I take it, put it on a tortilla, a little bit of that chicken, make sure it's all steamed off of there. Let me kind of come around. You can kind of see, I'll show our camera here. Maybe if you want to turn it alongside, you can kind of see how it turns out. Do you want to turn that? And you guys, if you feel like it, you don't have to. You can kind of feel the sides carefully. And the handles are still Seiko handles that I'm holding, right? What is it? Oh. Right? So I take this and I use our little tongs and Tupperware. They come apart, so if you want to use them as salad tongs, you can. They snap together. So you can stick that right inside of there and take out the peppers and onions for those who that don't like them and just grab the chicken. I throw a little bit of our sour cream on there. You can make guacamole with it if you want to as well. I make really simple, easy guacamole and um, your mango salsa, throw that all together and you feel like you're eating a good healthy meal. If you wanna skip the tortilla and put over a bit of lettuce, you have a nice salad that you can do a lot of things here with. So the last thing I wanna show you guys, at least as far as this goes, is our cold brew maker. So how many of you guys tried the cold brew? You love it? Yeah? So you can do, we always talk about the coffee with it, but I have to remember we can do the tea, right? <laughs> So you have your cap, <clears throat> you have your insert, and you have your carafe. The carafe is the same like the shaker that I showed you, um, and you can use that to serve from, and you also use it to brew. You're gonna take this piece here, I don't wanna set that inside anything, and you're gonna fill it with your coffee grounds, <clears throat> excuse me, with your coffee grounds, um, with coarse coffee grounds, doesn't matter what brand it is truly, to the first line if you want it ready to drink, so not quite as strong as it is tonight, yes. or if you want it extra strong, as Louise says, put some little hair on your chest, then you're gonna fill it to that second line. You drop this inside of here, you're gonna fill it to the black line full of water, and then you put your cap on it and let it sit in the refrigerator for eight to 12 hours, and that's it. That's your cold brew. You're gonna take it out. I always let it rest a little bit on the side. You'll see it drain off the side. You take your granules that are left over, dump them in your garden. Apparently it helps your garden. I don't do that either. <laughs> I've done this for so long. Um, and then you can rinse this out. This is a stainless steel mesh so it doesn't fall through the cracks, if you will, in here and get the granules inside of your coffee. And then you're gonna take your cover here, cover it up and throw it in your fridge. And it's good to go for two weeks. If I wanted to, instead of the coffee, I would take my loose leaf tea, do the same thing, and I believe it's, um, forgive me, three or four tablespoons, I'll get the accurate measurements for you, um, that you put of your loose leaf tea inside of here, fill it still to that same water line at the top, same thing, let it sit in the fridge for eight to 12 hours, and you have nice fresh tea, and you're gonna dump the granules out of there. Was that your question? Mm -hmm. So same kind of idea, comes in a nice, yes, nice gifting box for you. So you can save it for Christmas next year. <laughs> um, but then you always have coffee ready to go for the summer. And what's also cool about this, you can throw this in our microwave pitcher and you can reheat it. So if you're like, I need coffee this afternoon, but I don't want to brew the whole thing, or I don't have a Keurig or whatever, or I don't have any pods left for the Keurig. Anybody ever done that before? <laughs> that you can take what's left of your cold brew and heat it up throw it in your flask or whatever you're using, and then you have your hot coffee ready to go for that late night job or party or whatever. Did you use it for infused water? Uh-huh, you can use it for infused. It's not recommended to use too much citric when you're using the um, insert itself because it can break through on this. So you can use citric, but not too much, if you will. So if you're doing like infused water, um, you want to be careful with that part of it. The gallon pitcher. The which one? The pitcher with the infuser. The infuser pitcher, yeah, yeah. It's really awesome for that. So any other questions on any of this? Yes. How long does the blade stay sharp? 
on your choppers? Yeah. Good question. Um, the blades, actually, if you use them properly, they will stay sharp for years and years and years. We, when we do our candy making classes, I have designated blades for the chopper that are strictly for chopping candy canes and things like that because that will immediately dull your blades with the sugar and everything yeah. that breaks it up on there and butterscotch and things like that. Are they dishwasher safe? Any of your products? Good question. 99% of our product is dishwasher safe. Everything will tell you whether it is or isn't. I personally don't recommend anything that we have that has metal or a blade to go into the dishwasher. Your dishwasher is actually more harmful on all of your product than even your microwave is because the um, soap is kind of clanking and gathering together. So if you put knives in there, cookware, things with a blade, it's actually beating up your blades and making it a dull blade versus hand washing it. So I hand wash a ton of stuff. What kind of warranty do you have on your products? Good question. We have 99% um, of our product has a lifetime guarantee, no receipt needed whatsoever. You just call your consultant and they help you take care of it. If it's not available anymore and it's obsolete, we give you credit towards a new product or we give you the equivalent of. Because Tupperware's been around for a long time. Yes. Any other questions? Does anybody know how long Tupperware's been around for? 50 years. Longer? 50 years. More? What did you say? 70. More than 70. 75. Less than 75. 74. 71. 72. <laughs> so right in here. Yeah. 72. Does anybody know our most famous gadget? You'll all go home with one today. Peeler, peeler. Yes, the citrus peeler. <laughs> it's also very good for deveining shrimp, cleaning your cuticles, putting in your hair. <laughs> How about our most famous toy? <laughs> Shago toy. Yep. And it's one of the most educational out there, too, because it includes all of our basic colors in there and the shapes and numbers to go with it, too. Any other questions anybody has? Do you have lots of different colors in these? I hear you keep saying about colors. Yeah, colors. so is? here at the studio, because we do meal prep classes, we, um, we've we gathered up lots of choppers and things, because when we do our meal prep, we have lots of stations set up that everybody needs a chopper. So we had, our previous color was blue. So we have a lot of blue ones. It currently comes in the red chili color. So if you're holding out for a special color, check with us and we can see what we can get for you. But a lot of our um, meal prep type items like that right now are in the red chili color. Is that the chopper that was in the kit, the new kit? Uh-huh. Right up here, the red chili. Uh-huh. Your spice rack that has the um, the little... Is this on the... Where'd she go? Boom! Oh, magic for television. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the one that was just, if you could just buy the top ones, uh -huh. is that the same thing with that, is that the same set if you bought them individually? That's in the book, it's showing three different things. And right, so it shows you the rack as a whole set, mm -hmm. and it shows you the rack as smalls um, and larges, or the rack by itself. Right. Exactly. So we can show you the different pieces there. This is just showing you what they all look like, but we can show you what comes in the whole set. This rack itself, this might be the second or third time in my 20 years it's ever come out. I don't, Louise, have you ever seen this on sale? Uh, no. Yeah. Is it spin? So in, yeah, this has not been on sale in over 12 years. It's been on sale now? Oh. Yes. Cool. Here's a question for you about that. Yes. Because I'm rolling that too. Uh huh. If you didn't get the containers to store your spice in, uh -huh. how many would, how many little spice containers, the regular ones that you purchase them in, uh -huh. would that hold? So it depends on which size you get because your large fit here as one or you can fit two on top of it this way. Well, I was talking about like oh. not putting them in the Tupperware storage oh, containers. Oh, using non-Tupperware like spice yes. shakers? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. Because most of those are round and these are all the rectangular shape that are on a square configuration mm -hmm. here. So. I would say maybe three. I don't know that you could get all four on here just based on how big the base of that circular is because a lot of those are circular. So how many comes with the little little ones? How many little ones can you get? You, four in each set if you buy them individually. Yeah. And we like these shakers for a lot of different things. Uh, all of our spices that we do in our spice class, come. Um, it will fill one whole container of this. These are also good for like cinnamon sticks or band-aids. 
How many of you guys cut yourself in the kitchen ever? And you're like, I need a Band-Aid, like right now. Or the child needs a Band-Aid because it's not bleeding, but they hurt themselves. Band-Aids are nice to have in the kitchen. Or um, candles, Toothpicks, things like that. Toothpicks. Yeah, toothpicks. Are, are those shakers? Yeah. Are those shakers too? Yes, they... shakers and pours. Oh, Good question. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> and so this spins. So if you do have this in a spice shelf or in a cabinet or something, you want to make sure it is enough not too close because, you know, people line them right inside the cabinet and then it doesn't turn. <laughs> so pay attention to that because you need to have the space for it to turn and not rub against the sides. Um, and then the other thing with spices is a lot of people will buy lots of spices because this one sounds really cool and I'll make something with this or you have them forever. <laughs> you buy them in bulk and you think I'm going to use a lot of that and you forget you have it. And then it's above your stove top forever. The heat and moisture that comes up out of your stove kills those spices within about six months or less because once you break the seal on a spice, you're, it's um, losing its effectiveness, if you will, immediately. When they're stored inside of here, these stay sealed forever. So two things, you when you buy in bulk, you save money, you can make your own, and you can take out the MSGs and the salt and the things that you don't want in your spices. And you also wanna keep them in the cabinet at least one or two over from the um, top of the stove so that the moisture isn't rising up and over it, it's to the side of it, if you will, and it's not killing your spices. Or if you have a cabinet right beside Side. I keep the mine in the side cabinet up. next to the stove. As long as it's not up and over because that's where the steam right. is going. Yeah. Does the top turn too? No. It's just it's all thing. one piece. So it comes together. It's like a little puzzle you get to put together. Gotcha. <laughs> really simple though. Simple puzzle. The ones and it we like. How many on top? Uh, right now that there's four, but it'll store all eight, eight on the top. Or you can do the tall ones too. I just happen to have the short on top. All right, any more questions on any of our demo up here? Good to go. When you right. put that, the first product in your mango, uh -huh. after you've done and kept adding and kept adding the, the <laughs> green that you put All in the different the cilantro, pieces of yeah, the salsa. They didn't get real mushy after you'd been doing it several times. Right, now if that. I keep pulling it, it's going to get mushy. So you want, I just pull it a few times just to get it spinning and chopped a little bit so that I can add stuff. If I added all of it at the same time, I would break the gears on the top. Yeah, good question. Anything else about any of this? Okay, we're gonna say bye to our Facebook friends.